Cool. She is a filthy bitch, isn't she? I know in my last video I said that having heated jacket on was very little extra faff. But if you want actually very little faff, don't start doing YouTube stuff because it's a lot of effort. Is your microphone plugged in? Is the GoPro on? Is the GoPro charged? Have you got enough space on your SD cards? Doing some errands on the bike. Doing some errands on the bike. Dick lights on. Let's bounce. Right, ladies and gents. Can you see that? Probably not. That says 35,178 miles. Which means partly a request of a subscriber as well. But it means time for a 35,000 mile review on the Tracer 700. As a lot of you might have realized by now, I can talk a lot and I like to moan a lot as well. So what I've done is I've broken it down into five positives and five negatives of things that bug me, things that I really enjoy, things that I think make the bike worth it and things to look out for kind of thing. I mean, I don't know. It's definitely not going to be 10 points, is it? Let's be honest. <laughs> so why did I pick the Tracer then? What, what made me pick this bike? This is my first big bike. I, essentially, I wanted a touring bike. I wanted some sort of upright commuter that I could be comfortable on, that's going to have a bit of wind protection. I was going to be using this for work, and I also wanted to do little trips on it as well. I didn't want something uncomfortable on your wrists and whatever. You're in the middle of the road. The middle. In the middle. Of the road. Of the road. And he said. And he said. A little bit of a uh, tenacious D reference for you there. Looking at all the different competitors, you've got like the NC750X, you've got the V-Strom 650, you've obviously got like the 850 and 750 GSs and stuff like that. And now you've got the likes of the 790 Adventure, or 890 Adventure, should I say, from KTM. If you're looking at something you can get for about, I mean, this is seven and a half grand brand new, which is so cheap. So, you, like, if you look at the BMW 850 and the 750 GSs, if you look at the um, KTM 790 and the 8, 890 Adventures, by the time you get the bike you want, they're 10 grand plus easily. I mean, I'm sure you could get, you could probably get an 850 GS up to like 13 grand. So for a first bike, I didn't have the money in my pocket. I didn't really want to finance it because I thought I'm going to keep it for a while. So I don't really want to spend the money financing it. Ideally something like six months to a year old, sort of six or seven grand. And that sort of eliminated the bigger bikes, the bigger premium bikes. That left me with things like this, left me with things like the NC750, left me with the V-Strom. And there's a few other bikes that hit that category. I think this is around 196 kilos wet. So it's the lightest of the group. It has 75 horsepower, which is the most powerful of the group by only by like five or six horsepower. Oh, don't rain on me. No, I don't want rain. And it's also the cheapest of the group. So the V-Strom, for example, starts at about seven, five, seven, six. Whereas this, at the time I bought it, started like seven, two. So there's not a huge amount in it. It's, it's the fastest, it's the lightest, it's got the most torque, and it's the cheapest. I can't, I can't put my fourth finger out there. <laughs> so it sort of ticked all those boxes. So I thought, well, what I'll do, I'll go and ride one, see what I thought. I found this one for, I think it was just over, like uh, about 50 pounds over 6,000 pounds in the UK. And it was three or four months old. I think it was a guy had bought it and then was moving back to Portugal or something like that. Whatever the story the uh, guy selling it to, to me made up whether he made it up or not i don't know it had about uh, 1800 miles on it it was six grand so i was like it was it's only okay yes it's only 1500 quid cheaper than it would be brand new but that 1500 quid to me was to pay the insurance it came with heated grips it came with panniers as well for what i wanted it was something that was cheap it was lightweight it was easy to get on with there wasn't um a lot to go wrong on it and it wasn't going to be too cumbersome for me to sort of get used to riding. So yeah, that's basically what sort of drew me to this. So what we'll do is we'll go through the top five negative points so far. What have I found on the bike that I don't like? What have I ended up upgrading? 
there was a few things that sort of stuck out to me almost straight away which I upgraded within the first sort of six months. I will be doing an upgrades video, but I'll give you a rough synopsis in this video as well on some of the major ones. The first thing that sort of got me, the brakes. On the front of this, you've got uh, two front discs. They're Yamaha branded, they're not uh, Brembo's or anything like that. They're just standard twin front discs. I'll put the size on the screen here somewhere from factory they just didn't have a lot of bite they were plenty good enough to actually stop the bike or come to a halt but to bring you to a halt in a rush or like emergency stop they just weren't there wasn't enough bite there they just didn't give me much of a uh, much confidence and as a new rider the one thing you want is to be able to have that additional confidence in your brakes you like if you if you need to you can put on those brakes and they will bring you to a stop so the first thing I did was stuck in some EBC brake pads. I think they're yellow stuff or something like that. They're the road uh, bias brake pads. Instantly took, made a big difference to the braking power, which was good. Eventually, I got to the point where I was riding quite hard. Like uh, After a year or so, I was getting more confident on the bike. I can go out with my friends at the weekend and have a bit of a blast. And I'd start noticing the fact that they would fade a bit. Um, now... Obviously, EBC being a really good brake manufacturer, uh, I sort of, I kind of thought it's probably not going to be the pads. Um, so I ended up upgrading the discs as well. Now, I went for Brembo Serioro discs, which I know a lot of you will be laughing at, but at the same point, for two fronts and a rear, they're about £40 more expensive than going for the standard Yamaha brake discs. So I thought, why not stick Brembo disc on the bike? <laughs> um, that with the EBC pads, obviously I put new EBC pads in as well, and I rebled the brakes with a sort of a higher temperature fluid. That made an enormous difference. Like they are so much sharper now. Uh, I'll see if I could do a bit of a brake test, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Now I haven't actually used these front brakes yet today, so they've got a little bit of like uh, surface scum on them, but. They just like immediately, I mean, yeah, you get a bit of fork dive, but they have so much more bite. The thing that bugs me as well is the rear ABS kicks in so quickly. If it's anything more than you need to to come to a gentle stop, like you'll feel the ABS kick in. Now, I know that happens on a lot of bikes, but this one just seemed a little bit, it, it seemed a little bit more happy to kick in than the others did. So that, that's sort, I mean, it's not an awful thing. You get used to it. Obviously you just you use your front most of the time anyway. But that's just one thing that sort of bugs me over a bit of time. Second point, and this, I'm going through sort of like the major points first. The other thing that gets me on this bike, which I've changed, is the suspension. As standard, it was very soft. There's no adjustment or anything like that. I don't know if you can see under there. Obviously the rear has got the uh, preload adjustment, which most bikes come with you can't do a rebound or anything like that it's sort of just the rear is just preload which sets your ride height essentially so when i was braking a few minutes ago and it, it dived quite a lot that would have happened when i just brake like that when you pull on the front brake in a, in a rush you don't want to feel like you're about to be launched off the front of the bike so that was that was another thing i did so i've stuck in in the front i've put heavier weight oil in and i've put hyper pro progressive springs of course say that quickly um, in there as well. That has also made a massive difference. This guy's doing 35 miles an hour on a 60. It's still not perfect. It could do with some uh, adjusters, just because I quite like the, a firm ride. That's what she said. I've realized that I've forgotten to plug my jacket in. Those are the main two, like, I mean, they are quite big things. It's just like suspension and your brakes, not really a massive thing on the bike. But as standard, they were fine. They were, they were acceptable. They were sufficient. But I just felt that it didn't give me enough of what I wanted to be able to actually uh, feel confident enough as a new rider on a bike. One of the subscribers I've got, a guy called Nikos. I know you'll be watching this. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he mentioned that he's changed his, his front suspension as well just because it makes it so much better and we were both chatting about the fact that we're going to change the rear shock as well at some point 
So those are the two big things that get me on this. I'm going to have to pull over and check what the other ones are. <laughs> I, uh, I've written a list on my phone because that, that's what I mean. Apart from those two, there's not really been a, a, a massive list of things that I don't like about the bike. I, I know I've said it before, but these things aren't game changers. They're not like something that should put you off buying the bike. So number three on my list is the lights. The front headlight and the main beam, they're okay, um, but on a dark back lane without any sort of extra lighting you do want a bit more it doesn't give you quite enough on the side uh, the high beams okay but the light when you turn the bike on to high beam the normal beam goes off and the main beam comes on it would have been hands down so much better if the main beam the, the normal dipped beam stayed on and the high beam came on as an additional that would be perfect because that will give you enough low beam and enough high beam to just about suffice so um, what I did in this in this case I changed the lights to LED uh, I'll put a picture in the corner somewhere um, but you can essentially buy them and they're, they're sort of plug and play some of them you need you need to be careful because they've got big bases on the bottom of them so you have to make sure you're gonna have enough space on, on like in the housing for it but having those like absolute game changer I've got them on low and high beam and they are phenomenal the other thing that's really good with them, the ones I bought anyway, they had a beam pattern. So they weren't just spray and blind everyone, but they had a beam pattern, which is like, it's amazing. They are so good. The only negative that comes with that is the fact that because of the shape of the headlight, you still don't get a lot of the um, the, the vision of like the curbs and stuff, Like, the, it, but then that's the shape of the headlight. You're not gonna change that with a bulb upgrade. So that's why I went and got the fog lights as well. I'll put a link in the description to the a uh, video that I've done on buying the same ones for my girlfriend's bike. I'll put that, that up uh, and I'll put it in the top corner as well just so you can see which ones I went for. Adding those on, they give me the uh, they give me an extra light as well, but they give me the side view. It just it's just it it genuinely turning all of that on. It lo it's like you're riding along in the daytime. It's so much better. So number 4 on the list is the fact that the bike's basic. I mentioned it in the intro the bike is quite basic it's uh you don't get cruise control you don't get traction control you obviously get abs because that's the legal requirement but there's no tft there's no cruise control you don't get obviously the led headlights are standard on this model you get them on the new one you obviously are paying for what you get you're not going to pay six grand for a bike or seven grand for a bike brand new and expect to get all the toys on it number five it's kind of like a a 5a and a 5b I know that's a bit of a cop-out. The issue is the last two points that are negative on this bike are very subjective. So I think they could be completely down to my personal experience and the way I look after the bike or I the way I ride the bike. So it's not really a negative point, but I wanted to say it anyway. So number five, number one on my number five, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> so 5A is that the dealer network for me is very hit and miss now what i mean by that is my local dealer which i will not say where they are in case i want to ever test ride a bike from them or whatever but my local dealer is shocking they like they don't seem to have any knowledge they are just salesmen they like they don't care about it it's like my local honda dealer they're the same they're just they are literally just salesmen so you walk in they start talking to you like when are you gonna buy a bike what's going on what's going on with this oh do you know about this let me tell you all the, all the specs on it not listen to anything you want they just literally want to sell you something and make a load of money that's it and it really infuriates me and when i say they've got very little knowledge i had one part on this fail which i basically got replaced under warranty and that was a couple of leds in the rear light went that was it <laughs> but i went over to this local dealer to see what they could do and see if they could process the warranty and they were incredibly unhelpful anyway they just didn't want to know they were like no nope, take it back to wherever you got the bike from they'll sort it out for you just weren't interested and then as i was leaving one of the blokes walked out who one of the main guys and he went you got a headlight out and for anyone that knows anything about yamahas and quite a lot of dual headlighted bikes they have one high beam and one dipped beam. 
So this, this bike has one headlight on all the time. And then when you turn to high beam, that one goes off, like I mentioned, and that one comes on. And he walked out and went, you've got a headlight out. And I just looked at him like, do you even work for Yamaha? Like who, what? Like how do you not know that? You literally sell, you've got like 10 tracers in there. What are you doing? <laughs> and he just sort of, I just went, I just said to him, no, it's a Yamaha with a dual headlight. And he sort of looked at me as if to say, oh yeah, well, I just thought I'd let you know. And I'm like, you're, like, you're an absolute idiot. How can you not know that? And you work for Yamaha. <laughs> you're fucking what? Anyway, so th that's why I, I would never buy a bike from them because of that. My dad also bought a, a Super Tenere a couple of year, like years back from them. And uh, when he tried to trade it in for something else, they didn't want to know. They literally didn't want to know. They're just like, yeah, not bothered. No, don't care. But where I bought my bike from is a place who I will say, there's a place called the Motorbike Shop in Farnham in Surrey. The guy I bought this off in there and the service guys in there are the nicest guys ever. I do most of my servicing myself on this, so I barely ever go down there. The only services I've had done there was the 6,000 mile and the 24,000 mile, because the 24,000 was the valve clearances, and I wasn't sort of, I wasn't brave enough to do that without potentially ruining my bike. I went in there, and as soon as I walk in the door, the guy went, hey Sam, how you doing? How's the tracer going? Have you still got it? I'm like, the fact that he remembers me is just amazing that was like two years between me doing that so that's what i mean like i it seems a bit hit and miss i don't know whether i just had a bad experience with the one near me but it does mean if i need to go to a dealer i will happily do a hundred mile round trip to get a good service part 5b on the list is um the bearings on this now i've replaced the wheel bearings in this a couple of times uh mainly the rears I don't know whether this is because I've replaced them and I the first time I did it I was a bit of a moron. Didn't really replace them properly or I damaged them or something like that. Oh, a tie can. Very nice. The second time I replaced them was after I did that green laning. I don't know whether it's that that caused the bearings to go, but they do seem a little bit happy to go, if you know what I mean. Most wheel bearings should last about thirty to fifty thousand miles. I don't know whether it's the way I ride or what i was doing with the bike that caused them to go the front wheel bearings that haven't gone at all they haven't gone once i replaced them when i did the last set of rears but yeah again it's it's uh it's subjective it's likely very much my fault i, I don't know whether i can count it as a negative but then I, I guess when you're paying less for a bike all the components cost less it's not just a case of you're paying for a lower spec model you like all the components are slightly less in quality so that concludes the sort of list of the five things that I think aren't amazing on the bike and the things that I've addressed myself that I think could be better from factory. Uh, I think they have addressed them from the factory now with the new shape. Considering it's been quite a lot of me rambling, what I might do is I might make this a two-parter um, and I'll have the positives in the next video, which I'll put up next week. So if I do do that, sorry for making you wait a week. <laughs> I'll put the positives up next week to stop you having to sit through a 40 minute video. Thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next one.